Hello everyone, back tuning into today's uh, first video. So we're doing the um, first season one roundup for the summer of 2017 uh, for today's first video. We're going to get eight long range models together and we're going to see what they are all showing um, for the summer. And uh, I'll tweet you through all of the models in a moment. Uh, before we get on with that, uh, just say that later on today we're going to have the Gazzo of his Sunday roundup. So that's going to be quite interesting. We'll be looking at things like um, solar activity. We'll be looking at things uh, like uh, the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, when next week, 10 days, and all of that kind of thing. So uh, come back to that. But it'll be around this afternoon, around lunchtime, early afternoon, uh, something um, like that. Uh, just to say that the um, charts that you see within uh, this uh, season one round, you find the link to most of those on uh, the links page, so you can check out all of these charts yourself if you'd like to add. And this uh, video is going to be uh, placed on the summer updates page later on today, probably around five, six o'clock this evening. There'll be a written uh, summary that goes with the video, just uh, sort of summing up in a written version everything that we uh, discuss. So uh, let's get on with it. I just say we are a little bit short of some models uh, this first update, as we always are. We're short of the APEC, we're short of. JMA, and we are short of um, the other one we're short of. It's a Russian model, of course. Uh, sorry about that. I had a bit of a mental block. Um, we're short of the uh, Russian model. So uh, we're short of three. Um, don't have to be getting on with those. Uh, those models just don't really uh, reach a required time frame at this point. But uh, they'll be coming on stream, of course, as we get through into next month's second update. So I'm going to start off with the Brazilian model. Now, this one doesn't quite cover the full summer period either. This is covering, uh, it's covering May through to July. And uh, this is the 500 mm height anomaly, first of all, for May uh, to July. We always do this one a little bit different for some reason. So blue on these uh, on this chart is extrapolating to high pressure. And the brighter colours, sort of orange, uh, yellows, oranges, reds, purples, those are extrapolating to uh, low pressure. I should say the orange, yellow, orange, red and pink. Those colours are extrapolating to low pressure and greens, blues, and purples are extrapolating to uh, high pressure, above average heights. So what the model is going for, uh, for early summer, again, this is May through to July, it's going for a big ridge here to be sitting around, almost centering over the top of the UK. So we're starting off with a very settled looking uh, pattern for the early summer period and through to the middle part of the summer, really anti-cyclonic. That's a big, big ridge that the model is seeing sitting there across many northern and western parts of Europe. There will be a lot of dry and warm weather in with that. So this is a temperature anomaly that model is seeing for early summer. It's above average, of course, because there's a big ridge sitting there across uh, northern and western parts of Europe. So temperature anomaly is coming out uh, warmer than average for early summer and precipitation. It's near normal, but it's more on the drier side, particularly to the south of us. But I think with such a big area of above average heights there, uh, much of this area up here actually would be significantly drier than average. So a dry and warm start to the summer certainly being seen uh, by the Brazilian model this month. Go through to Canada next. So we're going to go north and uh, we're going to move through to tropicaltidbits.com, which uh, is the home of the Can Sips model, uh, which is based on the uh, Canadian model. This is being sea level pressure. Uh, anomaly for uh, the summer. This is covering the full summer period, as all of the other charts and models that you see in this video from now on, they will all be covering the uh, full summer period. So uh, this one is going for, we've got a ridge down to the southwest of us, and just average pressure really uh, comes through the country. It is a little bit Atlantic based, however, so we, there's not really much sign and the big area of high pressure sitting around the UK, such as we see on the uh, Brazilian model. But neither is it a desperately unsettled looking signal for this summer either. Temperature anomalies are coming out uh, warmer than average there across many parts of Europe uh, for this summer. So it is going for a warmer than average summer. 
And uh, if anything, it's a little bit more on the unsettled side. So precipitation anomalies are near normal. However, to our west, you'll notice that we have got uh, wetter than average conditions there in the Atlantic and then we've got drier than average conditions down here. Essentially, what it's doing is uh, it's a classic uh, westerly summer. So we've got high pressure here. We've got low pressure up here. We're bringing the flow in from the Atlantic. So it would be changeable at times temperatures overall are coming out milder than average uh, with can sips. Uh, this is Patel Peng uh, now. So as I was explaining uh, a couple of months ago when I was doing the spring updates, um, or was it last month? I'm not sure. But a couple of, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Hu Vandendool retired from uh, NOAA. He retired at the end of uh, last year. And now the um, the anomaly charts that we uh, used to look at from Hu Vanderdool, they've been taken over by a forecaster called Patel Peng. And so uh, these charts that we've seen here, they're very much along the lines of what Hu Vanderdool was doing. They are based on sea surface temperature anomalies in uh, any given month. And in this particular case, um, it's from last month, from February 2017. So Patel has taken those sea surface temperature anomalies from February 2017 and then looked at past years with a similar sea surface temperature anomaly profile and then created a forecast going forward. So this is a 200 millibar height anomaly uh, for the summer from Patel Peng based on the sea surface temperature anomalies in February. This is covering July to August 2017. Uh, and what Patel's seeing uh, for the summer is a ridge to be sitting down to our south and probably some low pressure up here. So essentially it's very much along the lines actually of what um, Kansits is doing. It's high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north and probably bringing in a flow from off the Atlantic Ocean. Certainly no sign of anything desperately unsettled there, but neither is it a classic uh, hot summer pattern. The temperature anomaly from Patel Peng, uh, Patel Peng's analogues is coming out a little bit warmer than average, particularly for England and Wales, and also down across central parts of Europe as well. And then the uh, that temperature anomaly, precipitation anomaly, that's coming out more or less drier than average. It's a little bit wetter than average to the north, but for much of the UK actually is coming out uh, drier than average in terms of but in terms of the precipitation for this summer. So a dry and pretty warm summer being seen by uh, Patel Peng. So far, these charts are looking pretty good uh, if you want dry conditions this summer. What about the experimental NASA model? 500 millibar height anomaly for the summer, June, July and August. It's it's going for above average heights to be through the UK and extending to the east bus as well. It's probably a trough just here stored in the Atlantic. The flow going something like that. Now that looks like it uh, could be quite a hot summer pattern that we see there. Um, I think that is in a, in a position to be producing some pretty warm, if not hot weather at times, to be honest. So the temperature anomaly for this summer, it's coming out warmer than average, a warm summer, again, from the NASA model. So far, all models have gone for a warmer than average summer. What about precipitation? Uh, it's near normal, uh, but if anything, I think we are probably on the drier uh, than average side there because, again, we've got that ridge of above average heights to our east and uh, low pressure probably around here. So uh, I reckon that would be a dry and pretty warm, if not quite hot summer coming up there uh, from the NASA model. And then finally for the Americas, we've got Noah's own model itself. It's a CFS V2, the trusty old uh, CFS. This is 700 millibar height. So all of these areas are in slightly different, these models are in slightly different areas in the atmosphere, 200 millibars, 500 millibars, or in this case, 700 millibars. Uh, what we see with this one is that we've got ridging out to our northwest. Also some ridging, quite an odd looking chart, really. Also some ridging over to the east, and then possibly, although it doesn't really show, but possibly a trough stuck in the middle, which would be around the UK. This is our first model, I think, but it uh, could be looking substantially more unsettled for this summer. 
Now, temperature anomalies from the CFS V2 are still coming out solidly uh, warmer than average. So all models still seeing a warmer than average summer. Uh, but precipitation, this one looks more, I said it looks wetter, so my interpretation was correct. What happens is that we've got a ridge over here and over here, and we've got a ridge also through here and through here, and in between those two ridges, we've got a trough that's going through here. So we're very unlucky to be doing something a bit like that uh, with the jet stream. And the upshot is that we have was we have quite a warmish summer according to the model. I'm not sure really based on the pattern, but it would be that warm. But models go for warmer than average summer. Whilst we have a warmer than average summer, actually we come out with quite a wet summer, quite an unsettled uh, looking pattern there from the CFS V2. Beijing Climate Centre next, we'll go over to China. This is the 500 bit of our height anomaly uh, from the Beijing Climate Centre. And, uh, well, here we go again. We've got a big ridge of above average heights around the UK. This has changed, of course, this model. It's up, upgraded, been upgraded. Uh, and the colours on these charts now are more intense and more vibrant. So I just should just explain that British Isles is over here very difficult uh, to make us out. But it's the same story, really, as many of the other models that we've been looking at so far. There's a ridge close to uh, the UK and also extending into Europe over there. So, is that going to be a warmer than average summer? Yes, it is. Temperature anomalies with the Beijing Climate Centre are coming out above average. So far, all models that we've looked at have gone for a warmer than average summer uh, for the UK and for much of Europe this year. And the precipitation anomaly for the summer, uh, that one is actually coming out uh, drier than average as well. Let me just check the scale. I'm sure that's right. Yes, it is. So a dry and warm summer being predicted by the Beijing Climate Centre. Lots of anticyclonic influences going on uh, with that one. Jams Tech next. This is the temperature anomaly from Jams Tech. I have to say, if, if you want a cool summer, if you want a cold summer, uh, and I know some of you do quite like cool weather in the summer. Uh, this update is looking very, very green because all models so far going warmer than average. Jams Tech continues that. Many uh, northwestern parts of Europe, the British Isles and Ireland included, coming out with uh, warmer than average temperatures this summer. What about precipitation? Well, the reason it's warmer than average is that it's also drier than average. There we go. So obviously, again, this is another model that's going for a big ridge to be sitting there across the northwest of uh, Europe. And then finally, the UK Met Office Glow C5, our very own uh, model. This is mean sea level pressure for the summer. Now, this one is different. It's closer, I think, to what the CFS is doing, uh, although it's more indicative of an area of low pressure to be around the uh, western central part of Europe, there's a ridge out, uh, uh, probably out to the west, and then probably another ridge up to the northeast. So similar, I think, to what the CFS is doing in a lot of ways. Uh, we're probably doing something a bit like that with the flow and the jet stream, and it places us within a trough to the summer. I can tell you that the early summer is more anti-cyclonic and uh, high pressure dominated, and then it seems to deteriorate later on. So it's the idea that it had a bit of a front-loaded summer with lots of uh, fine weather early on and then a deterioration. But for the mean sea level pressure anomaly for the summer, June, July, August, it looks quite unsettled that with mean sea level pressure anomalies coming out uh, below average. However, it doesn't make much difference to the temperature. That is still predicted to be uh, warmer than average, not just for the UK, but for most northern parts of Europe as well. Precipitation, however, you'll not be surprised because of the trough extending through the west of Europe. Precipitation comes out above average, or wetter than average summer is being predicted there by um, the UK Met Office uh, model. So that's it. That's our um, model roundup, the first one for the summer of 2017. And on the face, it's not a bad um, position to be starting off at if you want to warm and uh, pretty dry weather, because most of these models are looking warm and dry. In fact, all models, you haven't seen one uh, in this update, but it's going colder than average for the summer. So that's the first thing 
to say a really, really strong signal, albeit early days, but a really strong signal for a warm summer. And a few of these models, I think, are producing quite a classically hot summer, actually, if they were to uh, come off and materialise with their forecast. So certainly all models are ringing on a more than average summer. Precipitation is a little bit more uncertain. Most of these models are actually on the drier side of things, uh, I think. But there are a couple of exceptions, and it's CFSV2, and it's also, of course, our own Glossy 5 model that is going for a more unsettled, bit quite warm uh, summer. So um, warm and dry, really, is the uh, way that the models are seeing the summer at this early stage. It is very early days, so uh, obviously we've got to do uh, more updates. Next month, we'll start to look at some analogues. We'll look particularly uh, to start off with at what's uh, happening in the Pacific in terms of if we're going to move towards El Nino this summer. And that's the way most of these models want to go to produce an El Nino. If we're going to do that this summer, what could the impacts of that be, if any, on uh, our summer? So that's where the analogues are going to start off. Uh, next month, but of course, next month we'll also have that second season one roundup uh, towards the end of next month, and that one will incorporate the JMA, incorporate Russian model, and so on. So, have more models uh, to go out. But the starting point uh, with the models is very much on the warmer and probably slightly on the drier side as well. Right, come back uh, after lunch for the Gasworthy Sunday Roundup. Uh, I say we're going to get various things together for that one. Also be a little bit of a hint about something that's coming up at Gasworthy uh, in April. So that's going to be uh, quite um, quite interesting if you have a listen out for that in today's second video, which will be with you after lunch. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.